All right, over here at the fire pit, I have two larger logs. They've already been burnt, all right? So they already got charred material in here. What I'm gonna do is take some of these larger fuel size sticks and put lay them on the bottom. And this is often called a fire lay. And the reason for that is you're keeping that excessively moist soil from sucking out all the heat from your fire, all right? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my kindling right there. And there's a gap underneath. So once I get my tender bundle of the pine sap, the uh, uh, fuel extender, I get the fat wood and the birch bark and the cedar, the initial flame going, I'm going to stick it underneath there. The heat and the fire is going to rise. It's going to catch this stuff on easily. So I'm going to grab my tender bundle and then we're going to spark it up. All right, in my tender bundle right here, I have the wet cedar on the bottom. I have the birch bark, which birch bark has birch oil inside of the bark. And so when that catches, it's going to extend the fire as well. We're using all kinds of fire extenders, and that's what's gonna ensure that fire in the inclement conditions. Then I put the fatwood curls and the really fine shaving stuff here. I have some of the sap over here as a fire extender and once I get that going, then I can put the extender on top. I'll throw a couple sparks on this rod just to clear off that coating. All right, and then what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna push it down on top of those fine curls and push your knife down onto the rod to shave off some of the rod, but not to the point that you're throwing a spark yet. All right, by having that little bit of ferro rod in there, you're going to extend your spark. All right, so now I'm going to hit it. Let's see if we can get this going. All right, that's that fat wood and that birch bark taken off, okay? So I'm going to take it underneath my kindling here put that underneath put the kindling back right on top and the fire is kind of it's in a fragile state right now all right it uh, would be very easy for it to go out completely take our fire extender and put it right in the area that we know the flames catching Now we just give it time. We got a small flame going. Uh, because everything is so fragile, because it being wet, we just want to let it do its thing, all right? We just want it to take off before we start doing too much. All right, some of that birch bark is catching now still drying out some of that uh, kindling that we put on top the fire extender is starting to catch i can smell it some all right if you need to move some of that birch bark in areas that you think are going to be more beneficial to catch that's okay to do that but just kind of baby it be gentle
can see we got that birch bark going the heat's coming up and getting that accelerant or the fuel extender of the pine and drying out that kindling you really want that kindling to catch so it's okay to adjust some things but you don't want to get your fire out all right oh sorry just adjusted a couple pieces of that birch bark to help the flame now that kindling's catching on fire so now's a decent time to put on your fuel and again you don't want to put it on there to where it is um, too much weight and not enough oxygen getting underneath there you want to let it breathe the biggest thing people fail at is putting too much on too fast and smothering their fire. All right, one of the other things to note is your fire is kind of fragile at this moment, okay? If you don't get enough kindling in there, you're not gonna have enough heat to catch that fuel. So I've already got the fuel starting to go. All right, so I'm gonna get some more kindling and add to it. All right guys, so this fire is going. I don't really need to do anything else to it. The, uh, there's a little bit of embers going from the kindling that's keeping the fuel going and now I've upgraded some of that fuel that's right there on top is about two fingers thick all right so that's going to give me a decent little burn time all right so this could be something like a uh, you know a, a cooking fire this is obviously not a survival fire uh, but now we've got it going you can really tell when it's dried out quite a bit when you've limited how much smoke is in the air all right, when you first fire it up, there's gonna be a lot of smoke. All right, that's part of that moisture burning off. But we've had two days of rain. I think you can tell everything's kind of wet around here. You know, you can just look at everything, it's wet. And uh, just wanted to show this to you. All right, guys. Hopefully this uh, helps some of you, we'll say on a uh, beginner or uh, intermediate kind of level of fire building off of the landscape all right so we got um, birch bark cedar and pine sap and some fat wood as our our tinder and our fire extender then we went through the kindling and the fuel and it's really important in inclement weather to baby this thing don't make too much happen too fast Okay, it's not something you got to stress, all right? And the other thing is, don't put too much kindling and fuel on it too quickly. All right, so we got that sucker going just fine now. I'm going to hang out out here in the woods and enjoy this little fire. Just some uh, peace and relaxing. Really just wanted to come out here and practice fire building. Wasn't planning a video, but I've yeah, seen the opportunity arise for a good teaching moment. So hopefully this may have uh, clarified some things for some of you. And uh, maybe for some of you that already knew all this, it could be a refresher. I don't know. But anyway, thanks for watching. God bless.